Computer science skills are some of the highest paying skills on the job market. They open you up to many opportunities and high paying jobs in many rapidly growing fields. You can often work from home and experience some of the best benefits on the job market. And while a degree certainly will be very helpful, you can now learn many of these things for free or at a low cost online. And Coursera is a great place to do this. They partner with companies like Google and Microsoft, as well as top universities. And you also get certificates after taking courses, which you can print out, add to your LinkedIn and show to your future employers. Today, I'll cover the top 10 computer science courses on Coursera. And let's just get started. So first up on the list, we have the Google Cybersecurity Professional Certificate. Now, cybersecurity is a rapidly growing field with high paying jobs and where people are actually needed. Now, the issue is that many people think that it's super hard to break into cyber and that you have to be some kind of genius. Now, it is very hard, but that's not true. And with this course, Google is trying to make it more accessible for people to learn the fundamental skills of cybersecurity to help them break into the field. Now, I don't think that this course alone is going to get you a job in cybersecurity, but it is going to be a great start. That can be the thing that pushes you towards a new career. Now, if we take a look at the certificate itself, it is a beginner level certificate with no prior experience or education required. It is six months at seven hours per week but i have heard people complete it faster so depending on how fast you are you might be able to do it faster as well there are over 400,000 people enrolled with an average rating of 4.8 from these people, so people definitely love it. If we take a look at the courses, there are eight different courses in the certificate, and the first one is called Foundations of Cybersecurity. It is 21 hours, and you will be introduced to the foundations of the field. The next course is about managing security risks and about networks and network security, and then Linux and SQL, which are essential tools for cybersecurity, and then assets, threats, and vulnerabilities, and then detection, response, and finally, some Python specifically for cybersecurity purposes. And in the final course, they do also help you prepare for jobs and do some kind of interview practice and learn how you can then continue from after the course, because that's the most important thing, right? Now, cybersecurity is a great field and a fantastic course, but it's not for everyone. And I do think the next one will be better for most people who don't want to specifically break into cybersecurity. All right, so next up on the list is the Google IT Automation with Python Professional Certificate. Now, this one is beginner level and six months at 10 hours per week. And you'll basically learn how to use Python to automate tasks focusing on on real world problems. And this is definitely a high paying skill. Now let's look at the first course and we'll see that it's actually 39 hours of a crash course kind of on Python basics. And then we have another pretty long course and they're actually only getting shorter from here. This one is called using Python to interact with the operating system. And then we have an introduction to Git and GitHub, which are absolutely essential if you're going to be working with programming and then troubleshooting and debugging techniques and then configuration management and also a little bit of working with cloud, which is really popular and useful right now. And finally, automating real world tasks with Python, which is kind of like a final capstone project. For this one, Python is a really valuable skill. It is one of the most popular and in-demand programming languages out there. It is relatively easy to learn for beginners and very versatile and used for literally in all sorts of industries. And IT automation skills with Python will open you up to a ton of new opportunities. Even if you don't want to work specifically with that, it's still a great skill to learn. And for that reason, I would highly recommend this certificate. All right, so next up, we have the IBM Backend Development Professional Certificate. Now, this one is also a really untapped opportunity. And I actually wonder why people are not taking advantage of this one. Or actually, I do kind of know why. Because first of all, backend development isn't as kind of sexy as frontend development. And secondly, because it is 12 months at 10 hours a week. So it's a much lengthier course than the other options on this list. And I even think it's one of the most extensive ones on Coursera. But I think that's a good thing as well, because you want to go through all the stuff and you want to get all the stuff you really need and come out on top and not just learn two new things and kind of just learn a few new skills. You actually want to go all the way, right? Now, this one is also beginner level, but only about 5,000 people have actually enrolled, which is pretty crazy. It's a very low amount compared to the other courses. And the first thing you're going to learn is an introduction to software engineering and how it works. And next, an introduction to Linux and shell scripting, and then an introduction to GitHub and some Python for data science, AI and development, which is also part of their data science program. And next, AI applications with Python and Flask, and then Django application development with SQL and databases. And next, application development using microservices and serverless. And then a couple of more courses that just focus on these skills. And then finally, a capstone project. 
Now, I will say something that this is actually going to give you a fantastic introduction to many different areas, but it is not the most specific course. So if you're kind of looking to take this one to get a specific job, so I wouldn't take this one if you're focusing specifically on a job right away. But if you're looking to learn the basics and kind of build a solid foundation, I do think that it's a good option. Now, next up on the list, we have the Google IT Support Professional Certificate. And everybody's heard of it. And the goal is to help beginners break into IT and land their first job. Now, it is a beginner level certificate, which is surprising, right? And it is six months at 10 hours per week with, again, a flexible schedule and actually over 1.5 million students enrolled with a 4.8 rating. Now, it's really important to kind of emphasize that all of these people have definitely not finished a course. So you're not really competing with 1.5 million. Most are just trying out the course. And if we actually look at the courses and the reviews, you will see that there are a ton of reviews, but it's still pretty little compared to the people that enrolled. It's only like 150,000. But if you look at the final course, it's actually only around 20,000 or just above that. So it's really important to know that most people are never finishing the course. And that is why you should also really know what you're getting into before you start, because most people, they never actually complete the online course that they start. And they unfortunately never get to where they want to be either. Anyway, the first course is going to teach you about the technical support fundamentals and kind of how to work as a support person and then about operating systems and then about system administration and then IT infrastructure services. And finally on the list, it's going to be the IT security course. Now, I think it's a great certificate for people looking to break into IT and you may need some more studies as well. You always have to kind of be cautious when they say that you'll get a job right away. But I seriously believe that it can help a lot of people progress forward in their careers at least. All right, so number five and next up on the list is the Google UX Design Professional Certificate. And I do want to highlight that UX is slightly harder to get into than other fields on this list. You'll often need a solid portfolio and it can be pretty competitive because it's very popular. And I just want to give you kind of realistic expectations before I say all of this. Now, I still think that it can be really beneficial and it is one of the best ways to actually begin a career in UX. So we're going to cover it anyway. Now, this course is six months at 10 hours per week, and it's really focusing on giving you a solid fundamental understanding and also working some hands on practice with UX design. You're going to be following the UX design process and learn all about it, as well as actually how to do it yourself. And you'll also learn the basics of UX research. And finally, in the last course, you'll complete three different UX projects and also build a portfolio. And this is going to be really helpful for those looking to kind of break into the field after. And I do like the fact that they actually cover some hands on practice and you building some stuff yourself. That is going to be very helpful, especially for UX, which is such a practical field where you kind of have to, you know, break into it. There's not just one degree or something that you study and then you instantly get a job job, you actually have to put in some more effort. Next up on the list, we have the data structures and algorithms specialization by UC San Diego. And it is actually only five months at 10 hours a week, and also a very popular course. Data structures and algorithms are some of the most fundamental concepts of computer science and very useful and applicable in roles like the software engineer, but also a ton of other jobs. If you've already, you know, gotten a computer science degree and you've already studied these concepts or you're self-studying and you just want to kind of brush up on these things, I do think that it can be a good option to take this course. It's also something that companies actually test you on, for example, in interviews for software engineering roles. Now, this is actually a course that's taught at the university itself. It's not just an online course. It's kind of the same course that they're offering their own students. So I don't think that the quality is going to be a big factor that you have to worry about. But I also think there's quite a few university courses that aren't that good either. Anyway, you're at least getting the same experience as the people that are studying on site and actually taking their courses. The first course is called Algorithmic Toolbox. And then we have Data Structures, Algorithms, Graphs on Strings, Advanced Algorithms. And then finally, we have kind of a final project or a capstone project. All right, so we're going to continue with number seven on the list right away, which is going to be kind of the more programming specific courses. And this one is going to be Java Programming and Software Engineering Fundamentals. It's by Duke University on Coursera, although it is a beginner level course and it's six months at 10 hours per week. Java is actually still one of the most well-known and most in-demand programming languages. And while it certainly isn't a new fancy framework, it is very applicable and very useful to know on the job market. It is also a great language to kind of learn the fundamentals of programming, especially object-oriented programming and different approaches for programming in general, which is why quite a few universities actually teach Java as their kind of fundamental computer science course where they teach you the programming stuff. Now, this course is actually not entirely about Java. It is also about covering some fundamentals with JavaScript, HTML and CSS. And then you'll kind of get into the Java programming later. 
And finally, there's also a capstone project in the course. Now, I do think that it's a great course for those who need to learn Java. It is from a very well-known and reputable institution as well, one of the best ones in the country and actually around the world. And I've taken courses from Duke before, and I've been very impressed with the quality. So yeah, just give this one a try if you're looking to learn Java and software engineering. Now, going back quickly, if you are still looking to learn algorithms, there's one course that you cannot miss, and it is the Algorithms Specialization by Stanford University. It has over 4.8 from over 100,000 students, and the benefit here is that it's very specific and focuses entirely just on algorithms. It's also pretty short at only two months at 10 hours a week, and you'll get all the basics done. But now let's move on to the ninth course on the list. And number nine is probably one that you've already heard about because it's one of the most popular on Coursera. Don't fact check me on this, but I do think so. But I'm gonna offer you a new perspective now. So this is the Python for Everybody by Professor Chuck, and it is a beginner level course at only two months at 10 hours a week. And the focus of this one is to teach Python for literally everyone. So I'm gonna show you a small trick. And you don't actually need to take all the courses in this one because if you already have some experience, whether it's with programming or Python specifically, you don't have to take all the courses. They really start slow in this one and then it kind of accelerates later. So you can just actually hop to one of the later courses and that's gonna be completely fine as well. I do think that some people unfortunately underestimate this course. They think that it's only for, you know, literal beginners. But as long as you get past the first few courses, it can be really useful for people that already know some programming and they just wanna focus on learning more Python. I also like that they have an integrated environment where you can kind of of practice with their course but I do prefer platforms where we can practice a little bit more so I would recommend using a site called Learn Python which I'm also partnered with but I would recommend them any day of the week and I'll leave a link to them in the description as well if you want to try it out in a more hands-on way where you can kind of just do exercises just learn and you don't have to watch any videos you just actually practice and make sure that you remember the stuff that you're learning Python in the most efficient and useful way which I also think is the best way because it's the most fun to just actually do some Python and apply it. All right, so course number 10 is going to be the Web Applications for Everybody Specialization, and it's also by the same professor at the same university. And this is kind of like a follow-up course on the Python one, but here you focus more on the web applications, and it's for anyone as well. Now, some people are not going to agree with all the tools that are used, you know, all the programming languages, because in the first course, you're actually using PHP to build web applications, and then you're going to learn all about SQL, or, I mean, in only 15 hours, so not all about SQL. And then you'll be building a database application in PHP. And finally, there is a course on JavaScript, jQuery, and JSON. Now, it is not as famous as a Python course, simply because I think there's more competition in the web application space. And perhaps not everybody is as interested in learning PHP as other languages nowadays. But if you are, I think it's a great course to take. It has a 4.8 rating, and it is very popular as well. Now, I also made a video with the top 10 Coursera courses that you need to take, and it got a lot of positive feedback and went viral. So check it out somewhere here on the screen if you're interested, and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching.